collectivist or individual, what are you? Well, that's irrelevant because mob mentality will find you unless you are on constant lookout for it. Now, what is this so-called mentality of mobs? Well, it's more or less people joining into a crowd, but not a crowd for the sake of a crowd, but a crowd joined together by an idea or possibly beliefs. The crowd could be built upon religion, race, political tribalism, or something as simple as the feeling to do your part in some greater struggle. If you are to fall for the trap of crowds, you yourself will be locked away, and your much more primitive, unconscious mind will be put behind the wheel to do whatever the crowd demands. Now, you don't need to beat yourself up if you realize that you have fallen for the crowds before. It's only hardwired into your brain and all the brains of all of man. It's just some leftovers from the hunter-gatherer days of man. If you're in a tribe, then your chances of survival go up by quite a lot, compared to just going at it alone. You may think that you're a rational individual thinker, but you are just as susceptible to it as anyone else is. Every once in a while, a good, honest individual will come around and use crowds for good. But for every one good, there are ten bad. For every Martin Luther King Jr., there are ten Fidel Castros in history. But even with the best and most well-meaning person, if not kept under a tight leash, a mob will always turn to violence. With the single-minded behavior of the mob, it is incapable of higher thought. When forced on one thing, that one thing will most likely be destroyed. Whether the attack was justified or not is irrelevant. The mob had said to do it, so the mob did it. Be most wary of the ones who are closer to the bottom of society, for they not only have the least to lose, but the most to gain. Why be an individual who must take responsibility for myself when I can simply blame others and justify the theft of their property? They will say to themselves, These people have little to no self-worth, and they are still human, so they will become a group to find some identity with each other. Whether they look like them, think like them, or whatever arbitrary factor they want to work with. The crowd will compel you to do things for them. It could be something as simple as throwing them a couple bucks, or something as large as actively working with them. When you give all for the group, you yourself become irrelevant, and you will become much more open to the influences of the group. Seeing everyone act in some way will be perceived as a justification to act as they do, no matter how barbaric they may seem. If everybody hates some individual for whatever reason, then why not jump on the bandwagon to have a little fun? I am but one of thousands, you will say to yourself, and you will feel invincible inside the crowd. Everything put together, the stupidity of the crowd, the amplified emotion, the feeling of invincibility, and so much more. It is not a surprise when everything gets out of hand. I would say that the single most important thing to look out for in a mob is why they are doing what they are doing. Now what they may tell you may be an honorable cause, but then you must look at their methodology. Are what they doing matching with what they say? Even if the answer is yes, they could still be wrong. As an example, I will call back to the Boston bombing in the faraway year of 2013. After the tragedy, pictures were making the rounds on Reddit, showing someone in all black with a white hat with a backpack that looks somewhat similar to the one used in the bombing. In some pictures, he had it, and in others, he didn't, so the hive mind logic would dictate that he was the bomber. Well, spoilers, he wasn't. And a lot of the pictures were clear enough to see his face quite well if his face was actually facing the camera. Just imagine what would have happened if they had a picture of this guy's face. It would only take a day or maybe two at the most to find his social media and then everyone will know everything about this guy. All his information will be out for all the world to see, and I have little doubt that the man would have been raided by the FBI. And of course, it would be all over nothing. Goes to show, no matter how noble of intentions you may have, everything can go to hell really fast, and you can destroy the lives of innocents. Now, of course, not all the internet acts in this way, and can even do some real good. You can look for yourself, all the stories of cold cases being solved and people's lives being saved due to internet investigators. Not just stuff like cold cases, but all internet mysteries. The one I can think of now off the top of my head is Five Nights at Freddy's. So much lore hidden behind secrets and different cryptics and hidden in images. If it wasn't for the internet, we would not have so many people working together, putting all their collective knowledge to good use. But just to go back in time for a short moment, I want to talk about the French Revolution as an example. You know the story, the people got fed up with the aristocrats calling the shots, so Paris pretty much became one giant mob. So if you are to ask me just how out of control mobs can get, well, the beheading of 55,000 people could possibly be a start. And that's just the number from the guillotines, not including the public beatings, the firing squads, and all of the means of killing. If a mob is big enough, with leaders crazy enough, the people will do anything. And I mean anything. Okay, back to the internet route. So yes, things can get even worse online. 
Not only do you have all of the factors in play, but the invincibility feeling is turned up to 11. When you are behind the screen, nothing can hurt you, and you have instant access to whatever the mob has told you to attack. There are many fools who fight online with endless insults to people they know nothing about and will most likely never meet. When it's only one-on-one, -on -one, I personally find it rather foolish, but I cannot tell you what to do, so do with your time what you will. But when it is a mass hate event and everyone is hating on one person, then it gets a little excessive. Sometimes it's justified. Almost never, but sometimes. <coughs> Sorry about that, I had a little tickle in the back of my throat. Now, I really do not like these people. They do not think, and I have seen these people in person. Not in some video, but in person. And as an outsider looking in, it is so strange how someone can fall so far into such a cult-like state. They fly on autopilot and only think, do, or say what the mob allows them to. After seeing such people, I have made a conscious effort not to allow fools to make decisions for me. That's not to say I don't listen to other people, but I just don't listen to fools. It will do you good to stop for a moment and question what you are doing, saying, or believing. Are these choices of you or choices of the mob? If what you are doing are choices of the mob and you don't know what to do, well, I don't have a good answer for you. I guess let this be the start of looking into things yourself, doing your own research, and please, please use multiple sources. For the betterment of yourself, think of yourself as a singular person, and take great care not to allow tyrants to form you for their gain. Now, take care.